there's a brand battle being waged inside minor league hockey, an internal struggle that's raged on for decades. Should teams embrace originality with a name and logo unique to their hometown? Or should they defer to their NHL parent club in the name of cooperation? And should NHL teams be so eager to dilute their own brands by allowing other organizations to share their high-profile names and logos? These are the questions we'll explore right now as Aesthetics presents Design Decoded, Minor Matters, NHL versus AHL. As we get started, take a second to tap the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. In the minor leagues, little is sacred when it comes to branding. Few teams have extensive histories that aren't blemished by relocations and affiliate-fueled rebrands. It's the way of the world in the smaller markets that tend to host AHL hockey. One such rebrand, seemingly out of the blue, occurred in May of 2021, when the 20-year-old Bridgeport Sound Tigers were suddenly renamed, becoming the Bridgeport Islanders. The Hershey Bears responded with a jab on Twitter, asking, where are the islands in Bridgeport? Well, there aren't any. The team simply adopted the name of its owner and longtime NHL affiliate, the New York Islanders. The club was founded in Bridgeport, Connecticut in the fall of 2000 and began play the following year. There's no such thing as a sound tiger per se, but the word sound was a reference to Long Island Sound, body of water along which the city sits. Tigers was in reference to showman P.T. Barnum, a Bridgeport local whose famed circus act included performing tigers. The name had a deep-rooted meaning, while the logo was dynamic and energetic, especially in its original colors. From day one, the Sound Tigers were the top affiliate of the New York Islanders. And in 2004, Islanders' ownership bought the AHL franchise and changed Bridgeport's colors to match their own. So after 17 years, why the departure from an identity that made them unique? This was a, an organizational initiative. We wanted to move in this direction. We saw uh, 21, 22 is a perfect time to do it um, and really solidify uh, our connection with the New York Islanders brand. Everyone, you know, at the top of our organization was involved in this from our ownership group to Lou to Chris, um, you know, everybody had a say in it. Um, and, and ultimately it was really about, you know, creating that deeper connection with the brand, but also, you know, legitimizing our franchise here in Bridgeport. The Bridgeport Islanders are not the only AHL team with a hand-me-down name from the NHL. Just a couple hours up by 95 are the Providence Bruins, affiliated with Boston since arriving in Rhode Island in 1992. They bring their own spin to a familiar logo, even if the P doesn't quite allow the spokes to properly align inside the hub. And their secondary logo is a pretty direct copy of Boston's. Elsewhere, there's the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, in northeastern Pennsylvania. They've always had their own bird, but adopted Pittsburgh's triangle in recent years, and still maintain a degree of brand independence, with a dash of red in their logo. The Belleville Senators were the Binghamton Senators until 2017. After the move, the team borrowed Ottawa's O logo and replaced it with a B. They also happened to wear the Barbara Pole style jerseys that some NHL fans have been asking for. The Houston Arrows were dragged north to Iowa in 2013, leaving their unique and storied identity behind to become a carbon copy of the Minnesota Wild, with a pair of logos to match. Dallas's victory green aesthetic can be found just outside Austin with the Texas Stars. This logo is an evolution of a previous design, but there's even less of a distinction when we get to the secondary logo and wordmark. And one of the newest teams in the American Hockey League this season is the Abbotsford Canucks in BC, who effectively replaced another NHL-named team, the Binghamton Devils. The AHL club kept Vancouver's name, but instead of adopting the Orca logo, they went with a more obscure part of the big league brand, Johnny Canuck himself, only ever seen on a helmet until now. Some teams want their own identities, but are not yet ready to move out of their parents' house. That's quite literally the case with the San Jose Barracuda, who currently play at SAP Center when the Sharks are on the road. Both brands rely on toothy fish with identical colors. 
2020 saw the launch of the Henderson Silver Knights, who play just down the road from the Golden Knights. Their logo was intentionally designed to reference Vegas's while standing on its own and prioritizing the color palette in different ways. Though the name has led some fans to joke about one day seeing the Bronze Knights in the ECHL. Just east of LA, the Kings' top minor league affiliate is the Reign in Ontario, California. The team employs an inverted version of the Kings' Gretzky era logo. The royal theme even extended into the ECHL for a while with the Manchester Monarchs, who shut down in 2019. Names that follow a theme are popular in the AHL's Pacific Division. Players on the Stockton Heat are working hard to become Calgary Flames. See what they did there? Heat? Flames? Then in the desert, a classic duo with the Arizona Coyotes and Tucson Roadrunners. Though I'm not sure the cartoon Coyote and Roadrunner were ever as cooperative as NHL and AHL affiliates need to be. But there is a cool Kachina connection with Tucson's third jersey. The Roadrunner's name actually has a long history in Arizona hockey, dating back to the 1960s and 70s in the Western Hockey League. Same story with the San Diego Gulls, who were resurrected in 2015 by the Anaheim Ducks, just a couple of harmless birds in Southern California. The AHL's newest team in Palm Springs is owned by the NHL's newest team in Seattle. The Coachella Valley Firebirds join the Kraken in celebrating creatures of myth. These logos are almost mirror images, with the Kraken employing an icy two-tone blue, while the Firebirds use a fiery two-tone red. Back east in Quebec, the Canadiens keep their AHL affiliate close. The Laval Rocket are named in tribute to Montreal legend Maurice Rocket Richard, and every player wears his number 9 on their sleeves. I've made mention of the ECHL a couple of times already, but you might not realize the AHL currently includes a few brands that have moved up. The Charlotte Checkers were founded in 1993 by a NASCAR team owner and in 2007 hired sports design superstar Joe Bozak for a much needed makeover. In 2010, when the AHL's Albany River Rats, a great hockey brand in itself, relocated to Charlotte, they adopted the Checkers identity and incorporated Carolina Hurricanes colors. Today, the Checkers are affiliated with the Florida Panthers and use their custom name and number font on their jerseys. In 1995, the Bakersfield Fog became a founding member of the short-lived West Coast Hockey League. In 98, they became the Condors, and in 03, they transferred to the ECHL. When the AHL's Pacific Division was created in 2015, the Edmonton Oilers decided to relocate their affiliate, the Oklahoma City Barons, to California. They landed in Bakersfield, displacing the ECHL club and taking on the Condors brand, now in blue and orange. In 2003, the Colorado Eagles joined the Central Hockey League as an expansion team. In 2011, they made the jump to the growing ECHL, and when the NHL expanded to 31 teams, the American League followed suit, adding the Eagles, who entered an affiliation agreement with the Colorado Avalanche. As an independent team that's played across multiple leagues, the Eagles have always maintained their own unique identity. But after partnering up with the Avs, they did add a third jersey with familiar colors. There's a funny commercial campaign about turning into your parents. The airport can be a real challenge for new homeowners yeah. who have become their parents. Okay, everybody, let's do a ticket check. Paper tickets. We're off to a horrible start, but we can overcome it. Seems to apply to a handful of AHL teams that have adopted NHL designs. The best example is in upstate New York. For more than 20 years, the Syracuse Crunch have followed the lead of their NHL affiliate when it comes to colors. Navy blue and red while partnered with Columbus, and black and orange for a couple of years with Anaheim. When they joined up with Tampa Bay in 2012, they brought back a classic character, replacing Al the Ice Gorilla with the original Crunch Man, now featuring lightning bolts on his helmet. In 1996, the Philadelphia Flyers founded the Philadelphia Phantoms, so their former arena, the Spectrum, could have an AHL tenant after they moved out. When the arena was demolished in 2009, the franchise moved to Glens Falls, New York for a few years, the Adirondack Phantoms, before returning to Pennsylvania in 2014 
as the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Through it all, the team has maintained its NHL connection with a Flyers-inspired logo, along with orange and black uniforms. In 2011, Mark Chipman bought the Atlanta Thrashers and moved them to Winnipeg. It also meant moving his AHL operation elsewhere. The Manitoba Moose were sent all the way to St. John's, Newfoundland, where they became the Ice Caps. Four years later, the Jets brought their development squad back home and reinstated their original name. Like the Sharks and Barracuda, the Jets and Moose share an arena and a color palette. As both the Ice Caps and Moose, this AHL club has always worn jerseys to match its NHL owner. Speaking of Newfoundland, long before the Ice Caps arrived, the province welcomed its first pro hockey team in 1991, the St. John's Maple Leafs. Guess who their NHL affiliate was? Eventually, their remote location led to mounting travel costs, and their affiliate in Toronto brought them home, where they could no longer hold on to that Maple Leafs moniker. Instead, they became the Toronto Marlies in 2005, with a logo that blended past and present Leafs designs as a nod to their local NHL parent club. When the Maple Leafs updated their primary mark in 2016, the Marlies got their own version, keeping it all in the Toronto family. In 2013, the Vancouver Canucks purchased their AHL affiliate, the Peoria Rivermen, and moved the franchise to New York. The Utica Comets debuted a logo and colors to complement their parent club. Then in 2021, some musical chairs. The Canucks wanted their team closer to home in BC, while the New Jersey Devils wanted to bring their minor league outfit back to Utica. But instead of bringing back the Utica Devils logo, the upshot was a recoloring of the Comets logo. Some NHL-AHL connections are less overt. Take the Rockford Icehawks, who were founded in the United Hockey League after the franchise relocated from Thunder Bay, Ontario in 1999. The name and logo were later adopted by a new AHL team in 2007. The team kept its quirky identity while embracing the well-known jerseys of its new NHL affiliate, the nearby Chicago Blackhawks. The Grand Rapids Griffins maintain a unique brand but wear a third jersey in honor of their in-state partners, the Detroit Red Wings. From Michigan to Ohio, it's the same story, as the Cleveland Monsters recognize their affiliate in Columbus with this Blue Jackets-style third jersey. The rest of the time, they share a color scheme with their owner's NBA franchise, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the last team to mention here takes us back to Connecticut where the Hartford Wolfpack sport jerseys based on the New York Rangers 2014 Stadium Series look. Before arriving in Hartford following the demise of the Whalers, this team was the Binghamton Rangers. So that's an NHL-AHL relationship that goes back more than 30 years. Speaking of deep history, we'll close out on a handful of franchises that have been around for so long, they don't need to appropriate NHL branding to be successful. The longest tenured team in the American Hockey League, with a past untainted by rebrands or relocations, going back to 1938, the one and only Hershey Bears. And the Bears brand has only gotten better with age. In 2012, the team hired Joe Bozak for a visual refresh, a chocolatey brown redesign that's as original as it gets. Their color scheme couldn't be farther from their affiliates, the Washington Capitals, and that's just fine. The second oldest club in the A actually shares its name with the league. The Rochester Americans were founded in 1956 and have hardly changed as much as a logo since, while the NHL team in nearby Buffalo that owns them can't really say the same. In 2001, the AHL accepted some new teams from the collapsing International Hockey League, including the Milwaukee Admirals and Chicago Wolves. The Wolves haven't touched their iconic logo since joining the IHL in 1994, and they've even maintained their original color scheme, burgundy and gold, despite a revolving door of NHL affiliates, currently the Carolina Hurricanes. The Admirals brand dates back to an amateur team formed in 1970, and while it's seen a few logo changes over the years, the latest from design dignitary Dan Simon, the ads have never tried to follow an NHL affiliate. All right, if you're keeping track, you may have noticed there's one AHL team I haven't mentioned yet. One that doesn't really fit any of the earlier categories. It's a newer team that maintains its own unique identity, 
created by a longtime Aesthetics concept contributor, one who got the job through a concept posted to Aesthetics. The Springfield Thunderbirds have a look that's all their own, thanks to Matt McElroy. And if you want to learn more about how this identity came to be, I recommend watching episode one of Identity, the Aesthetics original series, right here on this channel. There's no way I could tell the story better than Matt himself. And that covers it, all 32 AHL teams and how they got where they are today. Some borrow their brands from the NHL, while others seek their own path. Is one right? Is one wrong? I suppose the old adage applies, to each his own. And in the minors, the only constant is change, meaning it probably won't be long before the next AHL team rebrand. Thanks for watching the Aesthetics YouTube channel. If you want to support this work and future videos, the Super Thanks button is a great place to start and hugely appreciate it. That's all for now. See you next time.